Dave McNally, the Head of Advanced Communication Technologies Training. And we're going to talk about LTE for dim and distant past. You did a lot of work on uh, Tetra, the old uh, um, system that a lot of um, countries use for their public safety networks. Um, obviously, um, it's an older technology now. It's got significant limitations. So what is it that LTE will bring to the party, as it were? Mm. Uh, yeah, well, I think you're right that... Um... Yeah, Tetra, as it stands at the moment, does have some pretty serious limitations. I mean, the, the thing Tetra was always very, very good at was uh, was the calling side of it. So, you know, making voice group calls, you know, fleet management, that kind of thing. Uh, but the one thing Tetra never really supported very well um, was data. Uh, now, obviously, that's the thing that LTE uh, is going to be very good at. Uh, I mean, there have been some changes to the Tetra standards that bring data into the um, uh, into the sort of the list of things that it can do. Uh, but uh, I think it, I suppose at this stage it feels like you know we're just adding things to an old standard to try and make it do something uh, clever. Whereas obviously LTE is is being built with with data specifically in mind. Um, so that's probably its principal limitation is the fact that Tetra really doesn't do data that well. Okay, and and Tetra was developed in an era when GSM and and 3G was was on the horizon, and it, and it was developed as a separate network because it brings uh, or it satisfies separate. Um, requirements. Um, it, is it is it reasonable now that LTE, which has been up until this point a very commercial offering, um, supporting consumers, obviously um, businesses as well, but um, it, is it reasonable that LTE has been seen as a, as a solution for some of the problems that um, Tetra was initially meant to uh, uh, to, to solve? Uh, well, yes and no, uh, I think, because it. I think that's one of the problems because, you know, once the decision has been made that Tetra will be the next generation public safety system, you've then got to come up with a system uh, or a program where you decide how you're going to do that. Um, uh, and in fact, there was uh, the UK government set up a, uh, a bit of a program called the, was it called the Emergency Services Mobile Communication Program, uh, ESMCP. Um, so basically looking at the future of Airway, which is the current um, Tetra provider, um, and they put together a list of options basically and said these are the possibilities of how do we build a next generation public safety network. So um, basically we could, bas we could get Airwave, uh, the current provider of the public safety communications, we could get them to adapt and update their network because, you know, obviously the thing is already there. Um, uh, you could build a completely uh, new network, um, a, a private network, um, or um, uh, you could use the existing commercial organization so that, you know, that will be a Vodafone or an O2 and so on. So you could actually um, use their existing services and augment those services, improve those services if they needed to. Uh, so obviously there's a cost uh, associated with that. So um, I think when you look at things like options one and two, either adapting the existing network or rebuilding a completely new network, these are clearly very expensive things to do. I think the estimates were, you know, four or five billion pounds to, to build a brand new network. Um, so in fact, what they've gone for is, the, is what they're referring to as option four, which is uh, really to uh, to use an existing operator um, uh, and adapt where necessary uh, th those operators' um, uh, services. So in terms of things like coverage and mission critical communications, that kind of thing. And I think they've gone for that one because it's the well, <laughs> relatively speaking, it's the cheapest option. So a billion pounds less than uh, building a brand new network. Okay. In terms of features, are there going to be any? Uh, limitations. Uh, for example, for example, I'm thinking that you know Tetra had direct mode operation, so two handsets could connect directly together. So I'm thinking, you know, firemen in a burning building that will be an extremely useful um, facility to have. Um, is there any sort of facility in LTE um, uh, of a similar sort of nature? Have we had to adapt the system? Uh, yeah, well, the, your standard LTE, so release 8, release 9, even release 10, in terms of LTE, doesn't really support those things. Um, uh, but uh, I think from release 12, certainly to release 13, uh, there are new services, new features being added to LTE. Uh, and the one that you mentioned there, sort of this, uh, we used to call it in Tetra, direct mode operation, uh, is being referred to in LTE as, um, uh, as, a, as a, a, a proximity mode. Uh, so, yeah, they are adapting the standards to allow you know, individual mobile devices to discover the presence of other devices and make direct communications between them. So that would sort of fit that uh, scenario that you um, uh, that you mentioned there. Uh, things like group communications as well, that's something which is absolutely key. Um, you know, the ability to kind of uh, press a button, PTT, push to talk, uh, and speak to, um, you know, an entire group of people or a, um, a defined group of people, uh, which is something, again, 
Um, well, it's a bit tricky with LTE because, of course, LTE is not a voice-oriented network, and the way that a lot of the public safety organisations work, it, they work in a very voice-oriented fashion. Um, so we kind of have to wait for um, certainly things like voice over LTE um, to become a bit more significant. Um, and once we've got all of the infrastructure and services in place to support voice over LTE as a basic service, then we can start using IMS and IMS type services to provide us with group communications, uh, mission critical communications, um, uh, and that that really gives the the public safety user uh, a bit of control over the existing network operator. So um, uh, so they should be able to preempt and prioritise their communications through the network. And, and that's quite an important point, isn't it? Because there's lots of um, or, or uh, it, in this sort of a new emerging world when we throw in the things like the Internet of Things and, and, and the requirements behind some of the uh, sort of machine-to-machine -machine communication, public safety, and then you've got commercial communications on top of that. Um, is it fairly straightforward to um, sort of separate those service types out on a, a single large LT 4G based network? Um, uh, well, I doubt it's going to be straightforward, uh, but it's certainly something that uh, uh, those, I suppose, those industrial and commercial partners working with the likes of EE in the case of public safety, uh, that's undoubtedly something that has to be in any contract or any service level agreement that's um, uh, that's signed up with them. I mean, I suppose the one thing we can say about LT is it does have, you know, pretty good uh, end to end um, uh, quality of service. So you know, you can identify an important communication and you can sort of clear the path for that uh, through the network. Uh, I, I imagine the one thing that EE would be concerned about, though, would be uh, diminishing their customers' experience um, uh, when there's emergency communications taking place across their network. But th these, these are going to be the finer details of any um, contracts drawn up between um, EE and uh, the ESN, as they call it, the, the um, Emergency Services Network. Okay, and uh, for certain um, profiles and scenarios, uh, when we look at machine-to-machine -machine and Internet of Things, um, I think we need 5G really to support some of those scenarios well. Um, in terms of LTE, are we purely talking about this being a, uh, or, or in terms of uh, public safety, are we talking about it just being supported by LTE or are, are the standards and are the, uh, uh, the, the companies involved, are they looking at this more holistically and saying, okay, public safety networks, great yeah. LTE, but it's going to evolve beyond that uh, and, and really require some of this 5G um, work? Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure it's going to go forward to, to 5G as well. Uh, I suppose the interesting thing about uh, certainly the UK public safety networks, if they're going to sit on the back of um, uh, EE as a as a network operator, then obviously that network operator and their partner vendors will be looking at um, uh, migrating to 5G and 5G type services. Uh, so all of the all of the services that sit in the back of that network, uh, of course, they will naturally be upgraded as well. Uh, but yeah, I, in 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 the well, from what we know about 5G already, there are these uh, use cases or service profiles, one of which is sort of your know, critical communications, you know, public safety communications. So there is already a, a profile being investigated for 5G um, uh, services in respect of you know, public safety, emergency, um, uh, working, that kind of thing. Okay. And then ju just finally, just thinking about the support that, we, that the um, uh, public safety over LT actually has, um, it, it, is there a big groundswell towards... Um, LTE it, within the public safety community, or are there other alternatives? How how set are we on this path? Uh, I think it's decided. Uh, I think it's been decided by the government. Um, you know, I think that yeah, EE as the provider of the network was selected. Um, I think late last year. I think it was. Um, so it's uh, certainly for the UK market. It's sort of decided that <clears throat> that's the way forward for public safety. Uh, I know in the US there's um, there's still discussions taking place. They have a thing over there, the, uh, the first responders network or first net uh, that are heavily involved in the negotiation with, um, uh, I guess, at government level or federal level uh, about what the way forward is. But obviously in America, there's a bigger problem because you've got the states, the individual states versus the, you know, the, the, the whole of the US and there's a lot of issues to, sort of, to, to solve there. Um, I, I think it's yet to be decided what's going to happen in perhaps the rest of Europe and the rest of the world. But uh, I think LTE is probably going to be at least the technology behind public safety communications going forward. Okay. Thanks, Dave. I think we'll leave it there. Um, and we'll see everybody next time. Take care.